Most other animals are so utterly at our mercy that we wipe out about a dozen species a day, just as... We wipe out over a dozen species a day? What's good, good, my name is Drew Bellinger. Welcome back to another video. I know it has been a minute. We have not reacted to, in a nutshell, in a very long time, you know what I'm saying? I usually like to watch these by myself once again. For anybody that's out there saying, oh, you're just doing this because you can get some views off of this, bro, I have not posted one of these in a while. And there is a reason why. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy watching these by myself in the morning, every single week, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I felt like it was a great time to, you know, maybe react to a couple of these in the near future. So why should we not look at aliens? I been saying we should not look at them we should just mind our own business and move on with our day you know what i'm saying i don't know what type of aliens he's talking about the dark forest what the heck is he talking about it's the same thing with all of these uh nanotechnology that elon musk is doing he is he really has not watched the movies let's get right to this video hit that like button let's get it the universe is incredibly big and seems full of potential for life with billions of habitable planets if an advanced civilization had the technology to travel between the stars at just 0.1% of the speed of light, it could colonize our galaxy in roughly 100 million years. Yeah. Which is not that long given the billions of years the Milky Way has existed. So mm. in principle, any spacefaring civilization should be able to spread rapidly over huge sectors of the galaxy. And yet we see nothing, hear nothing. The universe seems empty devoid of others this is the fermi paradox which we've discussed in more detail in other videos yeah i remember that confronted with the Alien seemingly scale. empty universe humanity faces a dilemma we bro i always bro i always just wanted to know like if there's any life form out there in general dude like i i don't i don't like i know it's hard to think about and i try not to think about and just live my life but like Sometimes you just gotta wonder, like, bro, who's really out there other than us? And is it wise for us to actually go out there and, uh, you know, try to discover new things, you know what I'm saying? Or should we just leave it alone and mind our own business and focus on Earth, because Earth is clucked. ...in the Milky Way. We want to call out and reveal ourselves to anyone watching, but that could be the last thing we ever do. Because maybe the universe is not empty. Maybe it's full of civilizations, but they are hiding from each other. Oh, damn, Maybe look behind you! Maybe the civilizations you. that attracted attention in the past were wiped away by invisible arrows. Mm. This is the dark forest solution to the Fermi Paradox. Ooh. Ooh, let's get it! The Way of Life the hunter awakes in his hiding place what the and heck? carefully listens for suspicious noises from the thick undergrowth before he gets up. Man, Another night has passed without leg. incident. The forest is dark and full of fog. He considers calling out to others to end his loneliness, but stops himself at the last moment. What if they are like him? All living things seek to survive, secure resources, and multiply. Their greatest obstacle are other living things that share the same objective. Competition between species favored the survival of beings with advantageous traits. Oh my traits. gosh! Wow! Wow! That took a dark turn! What in the world? <laughs> what the frick? Inventive, competitive, expansionist, and greedy for resources, which led them to winning the competition for our planet. Today, most other animals are so utterly at our mercy that we wipe out about a dozen species a day, just as... We wipe out over a dozen species a day? Wait, am I hearing Winning that right? competition for our planet. Am I hearing that right? Today, most other animals are so utterly at our mercy that we wipe out about a dozen species a day, oh. just as an unintentional byproduct of how we like to run things. Wow, But that humans is sad. are more than individuals. From us, cultures emerge, <laughs> but also cooking compete with each other. Crocodile leg over Competitive there? Competitive and expansionary cooking cultures tail? spread faster and further and merge with, subdue, or destroy others. If we look at our history, it becomes clear we are dangerous. Yeah. Not just to others, but also to ourselves. Our human nature has driven us to take over every corner of our planet, and mm. soon we will look to the stars, both to expand our domain and ensure access to ever more resources. 
And then we might stumble upon others trying to do the same thing. Ah, it's yep. likely that the competition of life also takes place on faraway planets. Mm. But if they're similar to us, oh. they too may be dangerous. The implication. Mm. As the hunter sneaks. Okay, so from from what I've so from the first part, what I've gotten so far is that maybe reason why we haven't seen any is because they're doing the exact same thing as us. You know what I'm saying? It's either wait, well, they may be not wanting to really be seen by us yet. Not yet. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, but I'm thinking that he may have the way that we are right now. How we're freaking killing a dozen species a day or something that's probably the same thing they're doing on their planet we don't know because we were thinking that they're hella different they they may be very similar to us in a lot of ways you know what i'm saying i don't know this is really interesting i love Through this the dark sorry for talking to all but alone i like he talking. knows that there deal with the others <laughs> like him he can't know their intentions if they are aggressive or not mm -hmm. the hunter knows he would kill to ensure his own survival so he has to assume that they would too. Yeah, yeah. And it might be that if he stumbles upon another hunter, the one that shoots first survives. Mm -hmm. None of this means that conflict is unavoidable. So far, the progress of the modern world seems to have made us more peaceful, not more violent. Maybe this is true for other civilizations too, that eventually progress means less conflict, not more. In Different way, yeah. alien civilizations also should vary from the mild and peaceful to the malevolent and militaristic. The existential problem we're facing is that when we meet others between the stars, we have no way of telling who is peaceful or aggressive and what true. their true intentions are. Facts. Similarly, they might not understand or trust. That's why you just shoot anyways and ask questions later. You're America, right? Years between us would mean years of communication delay. Damn, years? Both sides would be in a state of uncertainty, wondering if the wisest move is to just attack, because there's another serious issue, technological explosions and what? the first strike advantage. Nah, don't. Don't we do don't that. We don't know where the limits of technology are, but we do know how much technological progress matters in war. A few hundred or thousand years can turn <laughs> conflict with uncertain results oh, into a one-sided massacre. Yep. Caesar's GG's. legions would stand no chance against Napoleon's army with their cannons and muskets, which True. would be eradicated by artillery from the First World War, Damn. which would not stand a chance against today's drones and guided missiles. Damn. So the power level of different civilizations may vary massively, and even if not, between the time it takes us to detect another civilization and us saying hi, we might already be hopelessly behind on the tech mm. tree. Mm. Which is bad enough, but the nature of interstellar conflict makes this worse. If your opponent is light years away, sending an invasion fleet takes so long that by the time it arrives, it might be hopelessly obsolete. So war between civilizations might be just about eliminating the other to remove an existential threat to yourself. Mm, okay. Someone else who might be so scared of you that they attack the first chance they get. <laughs> In this environment, the only way to guarantee a win is to strike with such force and speed that the target has no chance of survival or time to counterattack or escape to seek revenge later. Wow. The stakes are the highest possible with no room for error. <laughs> If you're like, yeah, you're not getting revenge. Civilizations Get back out of here. Planets, that leaves them pretty vulnerable. All you need to do is throw something massive at a planet to make it uninhabitable. Ooh. So the ultimate interplanetary annihilation weapon is probably something like a relativistic kill vehicle. A missile shot at a planet at a significant fraction of the speed of light. For example, a missile the size of a person going 95% the speed of light has as much energy as all nuclear bombs on Earth. What? If you shot a few dozen at the civilization you wanted to wipe out, success would be fairly certain, even wow. a single hit would suffice. That's crazy. This is not that absurd of an idea. That's a crazy. civilization only slightly above us on the Kardashev scale would have enough energy to send multiple strikes against every planet it suspects of harboring life. We're screwed. What makes these weapons so sinister is how much they favor a first strike since they would be so fast that it might be Ew. impossible to protect what yourself is that effectively head? against them once they're launched. 
Look like a jelly bean. Between civilizations the may not be lengthy affairs, but rapid winner-takes-all situations, where the first one to shoot wins. This makes any civilization an existential threat to any other. And if every civilization is an existential threat to every other, there may be only two kinds of civilizations out there. Mm. Quiet ones and dead ones. So, what should we do? Nothing! Bro, this is what I'm trying to say, bro. Just leave it alone and not even try. Because this could go two ways. It could be they are hiding from us because they're peaceful and they're thinking that we are the dangerous ones or just what he just explained right now. <laughs> We're both threats to each other. Literally, uh, bro, they could be hella dangerous. We don't know. When we try to find them for the first time, what are they going to do? Are they going to attack us? Or are they going to try to communicate? We don't know. We don't know, but at the same time, there is so much, uh, so much possibilities. It's a risk. It's it's more of a risk to not to do something than to do than to not do anything. I feel like we should just stop for now, relax a little bit, you know, put a pause on this on this project, you know, what I'm saying NASA, please put a pause on this project. We don't need that, and then focus on other things. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. We worry. It's unlikely that anybody has noticed humanity yet. The radio signals we've transmitted in the last 100 years traveled a relatively tiny distance and have long decayed into unbelievable noise. At our technological stage, if we don't actively try to get noticed, and if nobody specifically looks at our pretty unremarkable solar system, we'll stay hidden. But one day we will- That's a pretty unremarkable solar system. That's hilarious. ...step into a clearing and make themselves known we should not reply right away. Thank you. But carefully watch them from the undergrowth. Thank you. Just carefully. Perhaps we are also th to conjure fears of predatory aliens all around us. Mm. Maybe the fact that we are looking at the universe like this is a sign that we are not. Bro, it's not even just how our brains. Bro, we've been growing up to think this. It's social media as well. Y'all have to. You. Y'all need to blame yourselves for doing this as well. When I was a kid growing up, what happened? All we all we saw was aliens, big, slimy, and evil, acid-type aliens that will kill humans. This is what we grew up on. Now our brains are like, bro, yeah, these are evil. These are going to be evil aliens or something. Like they're they're going to try to kill us. That's social media for you. That's movies for you. You know what I'm saying? That's not us. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you talking Grown about? Grown up, yes, as a species. You never know. There could be a friendly, welcoming community of alien civilizations waiting to hear from us when we are ready. As for now, the good news is there is actually little we need to do. Thank God. We just need to be thoughtful about the signals we send out into the galaxy. We need to watch the sky and learn more about our galaxy. Mm. Last, the hunter reaches a clearing and finds a comfortable position. Slowly, the sun melts the fog away. Lost in thought, he admires the vegetation until suddenly he is eye to eye with another hunter. Oh, frozen in terror, my gosh. just like himself. His mind is racing, considering all the different options. The hunter takes a deep breath and makes a decision. Mm, okay. Maybe the only way out of the dark forest is to step into the clearing together. And with this hopeful picture, That's we crazy. say goodbye to the year 12,021 of the human era. Bro, this was a wonderful year for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all did your thing for the entire year. Amazing. Keep it up. Nah, but seriously, guys, looks like that'll be it. Why, why we should not look for aliens you know say so maybe we should obviously send out signals but we shouldn't go the full nine yard and just like do all that crazy stuff i, I this is this is my opinion though I, I don't really know i would love to hear y'all opinions in the comment section down below what do you guys think about this you think we should really go after aliens see what it, what they're about you know what I'm saying see if they want to communicate with us or if they want to kill us or do you think we should just leave it alone and just you know calm ourselves down a little bit you know what I'm saying and just you know move ourselves in another direction you know what I'm saying but <laughs> love you guys take care have a great day have a great week I'll catch you guys later peace you win perfect